<laughs> Good morning, brethren, sisters. Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. It's 11.04 a.m., my time, when we start recording this. So it is morning when we begin. And by the time this gets uploaded, who knows what time it will be. This is my standard, the authorized version of the scriptures, King James Version. And for a saint, this ought to be, <laughs> this ought to be your standard too. And when it comes to things in question, this is where we go to. This is the deciding factor, the authorized version. The perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration, Word of God. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. This is a long overdue video. Uh, a dear sweet brother, um, I forget how many months ago it was, brother, uh, asked me about this video, or asked me about this, and um, <laughs> I didn't get to it until today. Um, I've had bits and pieces of it, but um, yeah, yesterday was a wonderful day. But his mercies are new every morning. So, got this video today, and the topic, the subject that we are going to be speaking about is music. Now, I want to tell you, we're not going to be looking at other sources. This, the authorized version, this is my standard. This is where I judge myself. You who have sent me that about judging, I'm going to hammer that here sometime this week. This is my standard. I judge myself. I judge you. I judge myself first. I judge you and the things of the world according to a perfect standard. And when you come into something like music, what saith the scripture? Let's say the scripture. Please get your authorized version and read along with me. <laughs> read along with me, word for word, okay? I, I'm just a man, dude. I, I'm not an exalted holy one. I, I'm, I'm not uh, someone that other men seemingly worship, okay? That's disgusting. But I'm just a man. I make mistakes. You need to see and hear, because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. You need to see it. You need to hear it. Read along with me. Be a Berean. Search the Scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Like I said, I make mistakes. Don't look at me. Don't trust me. <gasps> yeah, don't trust me. Trust this, the scripture. Okay? Trust the scripture. Today we're going to begin in uh, Psalm 5. Verses 1 under verse 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my capital K, King, and my God. For unto thee will I pray. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Recently, uh, past couple months, um, I what I do, you need to know this, I wake up, I sometimes literally flop out of bed and get right into prayer. Recently, I've been laying there, I wake up, and I'm like, I pray right in bed, then I flop out of bed, okay? Um, in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. Hmm? Well, you, how you start your morning, huh? 
before you do anything. Right? Turn on that radio. Hmm? Smoke that cigarette, huh? Yeah. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Uh, but God loves you unconditionally, right? <laughs> <laughs> Psalm 143. Psalm 143. Verse 7 on to 12. Hear me speedily, speedily, O Lord. My spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning. There's a point to this, so bear with me. For in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. For I lift up my soul unto thee. You know, Saint, if you haven't figured this out already, one of the, the very first things you should do in the morning um, should is like I've like I've told you I, I'll be asleep and I'll lay there and I'll sit up and I'll thank the Lord in bed then boom, flop out of bed and continue in prayer. How do you start the day off? You'll see the point that I'm getting at here. Let's continue. Deliver me, O Lord, from mine enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. To begin the day with the Lord in prayer, in the scripture, reading his word, having a dialogue with the living God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Teach me to do thy will. For thou art my God, my spirit is good, thy. Excuse me. Thy, lowercase says, spirit is good. This was written under the law. Eternal security was not there under the law. The Holy Ghost and the Lord has that spirit. The spirit of God could come and go, come and go as he pleased. Or if someone messed up and sinned or something like that. Okay? So it's a lowercase s because it was one imparted. Unlike today... The Father Himself, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, you know, the Lord is that Spirit, dwells within the believer today permanently, unlike under the law. So, Thy Spirit is good, and there is none good but who God. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Quicken me, make me alive, O Lord, for Thy name's sake. For Thy righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble. And of thy mercy, cut off, and of thy mercy, cut off mine enemies, and destroy all them that afflict my soul. For I am thy servant. So in the morning, God, in the beginning, God, it's the only way to start your day out. If you start your day out uh, in another fashion, dear saint, you're going to have some issues, aren't you? What does that have to do with the topic of today? Check this out. Begin the day with a friendly voice, a companion, unobtrusive. Plays that song that's so elusive. And the magic music, the magic music, magic and music and scripture have a K on it. Magic with a K. Music with a K. Six is the number of man. Five is the number of death. 
We'll talk more about that later. And the magic music makes your morning mood. The magic music makes your morning mood. Hey, sweetheart, you know who this is, don't you? You wicked lost devil. Off on your way. Hit the open road. There is magic at your fingers. For the, this is verbatim, for the spirits ever linger, for the spirits ever lingers. I wonder what spirits they're talking about. Undemanding contact in your happy solitude. <laughs> we'll, we'll stop there. I think you get the point. What is that, Brad? The spirit of radio. The Spirit of Radio by Rush. Lyrics written by Neil Peart, sung by Getty Lee, performed by Rush. The Spirit, and you see here, <laughs> capital S they made of that. Yeah. Yeah. Begin the day with a friendly voice, a companion, unobtrusive, plays that song that's so elusive and the magic music makes your morning mood. I, I used to be a I used to be a big fan of Rush um, used to be um, mainly because of Neil Peart who was one of the greatest drummers ever to live. He, he really was. And as a lost man, I was a drummer myself. Uh, I, I wasn't no Neil Peart, but I was a very good drummer. Uh, I had good footwork. With the, you need to know this. With double bass. Okay, I wasn't like that wicked devil Esapario, which will be in the uh, description box of this video. Uh, I wasn't like that guy who literally sold his soul to the devil so he could play like that. I wasn't like that. But, um, yeah, I used to really like Rush. Really like Rush. And what does it mean to be anti? Anti means to be against and to replace. In the beginning, God wants us to focus on Him. Well, we just uh, heard, and that was verbatim lyrics from the song Spirit of Radio. Begin the day with a friendly voice. They have God said. Hmm. Psalm 138. Psalm 138. I Like I said, I used to be a huge Rush fan. Lord saved me 16 years ago. Gave that up. And look at those lyrics. Hmm. Psalm 138, I will praise thee with my whole heart before the gods, lowercase g, will I sing praise unto thee. Sing praise unto the Lord. Hmm. What, what Lord were they singing praise to? Hmm? I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and thy, for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy lowercase w word above all thy name. Hmm. That means that God has staked everything, his reputation on, it is written, it is written. It is written. Why do you think Christianity is all ye hath God said? Okay. E even a novice can figure that one out. Okay. In the day when I caught, cried, thou answeredest me, and strengthenedest me with strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord, when they hear the words of thy mouth. Yea, they shall sing in the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. 
Though the Lord be high, yet hath he respect unto the lowly. He giveth grace unto the lowly, but in Peter it says he giveth grace unto the humble. If you're lowly, usually that leads into humility, being humble. Usually. Usually. There's a lot of uh, these YouTube Christians who have this disgusting false humility who half-heartedly accept responsibility but there's always a well they did it first then they did they did and I hey I just you make me sick anyway yay they shall sing in the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, yet hath he respect unto the lowly, but the proud he knoweth afar off. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. Works of thine own hands. It's his salvation, not ours. Unless, you know, you're a sinless perfectionist or an idiot antinomianist, whatever it is, or a Catholic, or go down the line. I will praise thee with my whole heart. For the gods will I sing praise unto thee. Psalm 51. Psalm 51. Psalm 51. Verses 14 and 15. Deliver me from blood guiltness, O God, thou God of my salvation. And my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. Sing aloud of thy righteousness. The Catholic, the antinomianist, they sing of their own righteousness. Because the Catholic went to church, they went and had communion, they ate the cookie, they did penance, they were confirmed. The antinomianist, uh, the daughter of the whore, uh, they saved themselves by their own belief. The stupid, sinless perfectionist, they don't say anymore, they're a God. Mm. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall shew forth thy praise. The Lord is the one who saved me. The Lord saved me, a sinner who is chief. The Lord has been merciful. Because of the Lord, I am doing far better than I deserve. I deserve death, hell, and the grave. But because of the Lord, I'm doing better than I deserve. And see, when the Lord saves you, you have a reason to sin. And see, look at what we've read thus far. Look at what we have read thus far. Deliver me from blood guiltness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. Thou, O Lord. The songs this, that we sing, the praise that we give unto the Lord for the saints, doesn't have its foundation here in flesh. And see, that's where Christianity with its disgusting CCM and, as we have discovered, a lot of the hymns, the old-time hymns. You have figured it out, and uh, Brother Alexander B. Hartley and I, we've talked about this, and this might, a continuation of this might be a bread of life. You know, these guys, that like peanut butter and jelly. 
<laughs> yeah, sandwiched between the bread of life. There might be a continuation of this because this would be a, a really good topic for the both of us. But, but, the hymns, the old time hymns, when you look at them, and you want to compare the hymns to scripture, you will soon discover that a lot of the hymns, the good old fashioned hymns, aren't really scripturally accurate, are they? Does that mean we shouldn't do that, use them? No, but you gotta be aware. Gotta be aware. The hymns written by man are not inspired. At least by God. Psalm 7. Psalm 7. 10 out of 17. Psalm 7. 10 on to 17. My defense is of God, which saveth the upright in heart. God judgeth the righteous. God is angry at the wicked every day. That crosses dispensational lines, by the way. If he turn not, he will whet, W-H-E-T, his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. Instruments of death prepared for him. If someone wants to reject God and go on in their trespass and sin and, you know, be, well, I don't like that. I'm going to do what I want to do because all things are lawful unto me. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. You want to believe a lie, huh? You want to go on in that nonsense, huh? You want to think it's okay just sit there and watch television all day and, and think you're a Christian, right? Hmm. Hmm. Now, that's excluding people with health issues, of course. But, see, God's a giving God. You don't want the truth. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death, and the wages of sin is death. God can't sin. God doesn't sin. But you know what he does? It's like, hey, you want to believe in that? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go right ahead. It's waiting for you. He ordaineth his arrows against the persecutors. Christians who attack the saints. Okay? Behold, he travaileth with iniquity, and hath conceived mischief, and brought forth falsehood. Oh, the antinomianist is a perfect example of this. They will do anything to justify their sin. They'll twist any scripture. They'll do anything to justify their sin. <laughs> they travaileth with iniquity. They do. They have conceived mischief. How to get away with sin. And bring forth falsehood. They lie. All free gracers are liars. He made a pit and digged it. And is fallen into the ditch which he made. Yeah, you don't want to take warning. You don't want to believe the truth. So sorry. His mischief shall return upon his own head. And his violent dealing shall come down upon his own pate. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness. And will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High, His righteousness. You speak to a Catholic. You speak to an antinomianist. You speak to a sinless perfectionist. It's their righteousness that they're praising, not the Lord's. You even listen to some of these disgusting King James Bible and Christians. It's their righteousness. And remember, take offense, take a gate. King James Bible believing Christianity, dear friend, has become nothing more 
than a denomination in Christendom. Psalm 13. Psalm 13. We sing, we see thus far, sing praise unto the Lord for his righteousness. That the song that comes from us is to be directed at the Lord for his righteousness, shewing forth his works. He saved me, a sinner who is chief. I didn't. I was not good enough to die for. That's one of the wor one of the worst lies that Chris and Dumb pushes at you. That there was something worth you, worthy in you, worthy in you for God to die for. No, there wasn't. God so loved that He gave. Some worth him saving me for. Uh, uh, there is no fear of God before their eyes. Psalm 13. How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul? having sorrow in my heart daily. <coughs> How long shall mine enemy be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest mine enemy say, I have prevailed against him. And those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord, because he hath dealt bountifully with me. So, we see this idea of singing. Praise unto the Lord for his righteousness and for what he has done. For a sinner who is chief. And see, the problem with that can arise is someone can be bolstered up in pride through that. They can, I've seen it. They will use their singing as a means of self exhortation. You, you see this in the church buildings. You usually have a female. Um, choir director they have tryouts and say hey if you're not good enough you can't sing you don't have a good enough voice you can't sing to the Lord how do you think the Lord would feel about that and I remember my minuscule time in church buildings these, these band leaders or whatever you want to call them some of the most snobbish pompous individuals that you would ever want to encounter and as I recollect, every single one that I've encountered has been a woman. Hmm. Hmm. Music. Music with a K. Music with a K is six letters. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Take off the K, you have five. Savior in Scripture is seven letters. Take out the I, it's six. Don't, don't, don't miss that. Don't, don't miss that. Similar magic with a K. <laughs> okay? Okay? Man, six letters. Take off the K, five, death. Man, death. Get it? First Samuel 18. First Samuel 18. First Samuel 18, verses 5 on to verse 9. First appearance. 
of the word music. We're not going to look at them all because there are quite a few, but the first appearance of the word music with a K. Music with a K. Hmm. Verses 5 on to verse 9. And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him, and behaved himself wisely. And Saul sent him over the men of war. And he was accepted in the sight of all the people, and also in the sight of Saul's servants. And it came to pass as they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines, that the women came out of all cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tabrets with joy and with instruments of music instruments of music Okay, instruments of music. Now, where are we're going to just basically touch on, we're not going to focus in on the actual instruments themselves. We are going to on one specific, which a brother brought up to me and who is right. You're absolutely right about that one, brother, because the scripture is right. Okay, now let's continue. Okay. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. And Saul was very wroth. And the saying displeased him. And he said, They have ascribed unto David ten thousands. And to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? Oh, a little envy is there. Ah, there, Saul, yeah? Yeah, and Saul eyed David from that day forward. Now, instruments of music. Who are they singing and dancing to? Was it unto the Lord? No. The women came out to sing and dance. With what? Tabrets and joy and with instruments of music. Hmm. Who are they singing and dancing to? Saul and David. Men. It's the first appearance of music. Hmm. Hmm. First Chronicles 15. First Chronicles 15. What God considers acceptable unto him is totally different to what we consider is acceptable unto him. But then again, you got to remember, God's not a God of specificity, right? Ever read about it, how, uh, he, how he told Moses to assemble the Ark of the Covenant and the Tabernacle? But he's not a God of specificity. No, not at all. Stupid. 1 Chronicles 15, verses 11 on to verse 16. And David called for Zadok and Abiathar the priests, and for the Levites, for Uriel, Uriel, Asaiah and Joel, Shemaiah and Eliel, and Am, Amman, Amman Adab, Amin Adab, Amin Adab, and said unto them, Ye are the chief of the fathers of the Levites. Sanctify yourselves, both ye and your brethren, that ye may bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel unto the place that I have prepared for it. For because ye did it not at the first, the Lord our God made a breach upon us, for that we ought ha for that we sought him not after the due order. David wanted to take the ark and he put it on a cart, and then the oxen stumbled and um 
Oh, what was his name? Yuza? Uh, Yuza, I think it was Yuza. Uh, I think it was. I'll be corrected on that. Yuza put forth his hand to the ark, and he touched it and made God angry, and he killed him right there. Okay? <laughs> All right? But he was doing something good because the oxen stumbled, and he's like, studied the ark, and the Lord's like, ah! You know? Only the Levites should have been the ones to do that. This is an example of doing the right thing the wrong way. After the due order. I'm going to say 35 minutes in. God does not like CCM. God is not for modern music. Why? Because it's fleshly. Okay? You can justify just as if I, all day, all night, we're seeing what the scripture says. Okay? Well, God doesn't care. Oh, yeah, that's right. God's not a God of specificity, is he? Yeah. So the priests and the Levites sanctified themselves to bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel. And the children of the Levites bear the ark of God upon their shoulders with the staves thereon, as Moses commanded according to the word of the Lord. And what are we reading to in this? Verse 16. And David spake to the chief of the Levites to appoint their brethren to be singers with instruments of music, psalteries, and harps, and cymbals sounding by lifting up the voice with joy. Psalteries, harps, stringed instruments, cymbals, metallic discs that were like psh, stuff like that. Maybe one held it and hit it with a stick. Maybe. Maybe that is possible. But see, the evolution of what we call music, specifically the drum. Okay, the, the closest thing, and I'm getting a little ahead of myself, um, the timbrel. The timbrel was a circular thing that had little symbols in it and sometimes had a skin over it to act as a drum. Okay, the word drum does not appear in scripture. The evolution of that is... Some guy sitting behind a drum set, playing drums, hitting a cymbal on a stand, playing fills with his feet as well like that, where if they are amplified, they can, the, the, the frequency that they emit can mess with the heart. Oh, don't tell me otherwise. I know. I was a drummer. I've played in front of people. I've had my drums amplified with the blah, 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 uh, double bass going, okay? And that's projected. The vibrations within the chest cavity can reverberate and alter the heart rhythm. Same with a bass guitar. Same with a regular guitar. Also with a viol, violin. Okay? Okay? No. God is not for, speaking of drums, God is not for the evolution of what drums has become. He isn't. Because, like I said, if you ever been around uh, a live band before, <laughs> band of robbers, if you've ever been around a live band before, even without massive ma uh, microphones or whatever, that drumming boy, that <laughs> magnified, the thumping, faster than the heartbeat. The sound reverberates into the chest cavity. It can alter your heart rhythm. It's fleshly! fleshly okay it's fleshly but scripturally 
scripturally. And there are contrasts when we're going to look at this. But scripturally, we as saints to sing praise unto the Lord. And see, that praise doesn't come from our flesh. Because the flesh profiteth nothing. First Chronicles 16. First Chronicles 16. 39 out of 42. And Zadok, the priest, and his brethren, the priests, before the tabernacle of the Lord in the high place that was at Gibeon, to offer burnt offerings unto the Lord upon the altar of the burnt offering continually morning and evening, and to do according to all that is written in the law of the Lord, with which he commanded Israel. And with them Heman and Jeduthun, and the rest that were chosen, who were expressed by name, to give thanks to the Lord, because his mercy endureth forever. Psalm 136. I like I've told you before, I've heard that sung before in Hebrew. Um beautiful. 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 More on that in a bit. And with them Hema and Jaduthan with trumpets, a wind instrument, and cymbals. For those that should make a sound and with musical instruments of God. And the sons of Jeduthun were porters. The modern drum kit is not an instrument of God. Hey! I used to be a drummer. I used to be a really good drummer. Okay? Modern drums are not of God. Okay? How many lost pre when you were lost? You've been to the concerts? You've been to Ozfest? You've seen Slayer or whatever? And you hear the, the bass and the, you know, the... That drum beating. Okay? It's fleshly. It's carnal. It gets the flesh going. And see... Hymns, praises unto the Lord, are contrary to the flesh. Think about that. Why? Because they don't come of the flesh. They come from contrition. They come from brokenness. They come from fear. And see... A lost person, Christian, they're, they're programmed in their phallus houses. S stand up, sit down. Stand up, sit down. Clap your hands. It's manufactured. It's manufactured. It's fleshly. It's fleshly. Okay? All right? Second Chronicles 5. Second Chronicles 5. Now, excuse me. Second Chronicles 5, 11 on to verse 14. Brad, are you saying all modern Christian music is against God? Yes, I am. Oh. Yeah, the third day. Cry out to Jesus. What Jesus is he talking about? Hmm? What Jesus is he talking about? Um, I can only imagine. I heard the back mask of that. Um, the, 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 the channel used to be the open scroll. Weird guy, okay? But uh, he had a whole bunch of back masking of that. I heard the back mask on that. That's when they play it backwards. Uh, creepy. Okay, I can only imagine fleshly. Fleshly. Um, uh, what was that? Uh, Resurrection song by Phillips, Craig, and Dean. I liked them. 
Their music is fleshly. It's fleshly. It's carnal. You're better off. Okay. <laughs> it's like, you know, the Christian version of the devil's music and it's all the devil's music. You're, you're better off listening to Plant and Page and Zeppelin. You're better off listening to that than deceiving yourself while listening to contemporary Christian music. And of course, remember, the Catholics love that stuff. Okay? Okay? What about the, the old-time hymns? They are far better than anything that is today. But also with the old-time hymns, you have to remember, they don't usually line up with Scripture. Usually, they don't. And any of you who are versed in hymns, uh, how many hymns you know about that talk about the three-person trinity? How many hymns do you know of that you wash yourself clean? You know a lot of the hymns that are celebrated today also have their roots in Calvinism? Hmm? Don't, hey, don't believe me. You check that one out yourself, man. And another thing, and I, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but I'm going to mention it now. You know, in a lot of our music, words rhyme. Rhyme, find me rhyme. Rhyming words. I shouted, then he doubted. I ran, <laughs> and there was a fan, or whatever. You get the point. A lot of the music we have uh, today, there's a lot of there's a lot of rhyme in it. Do the research. You know, rhyming like that is linked onto spell casting. Check that out yourself. Spell casting. Toil, toil and trouble. Give to my enemy the double. Witches incantations? Rhyming? And we're going to see song here in scripture. They don't rhyme. Second Chronicles 5 Verses 11 on verse 14. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place. For all the priests that were present were sanctified. And did not then wait by course. And the Levites, which were the singers. All of them of Asaph, of Heman, and Jeduthun. With their sons and their brethren being arrayed in white linen. Having cymbals. And psalteries and harps. Think about the symbols again. Uh, probably two. It says symbols. So it could be either uh, one dude with two symbols. Or many with one symbol and maybe a stick. Okay. And hitting it with the stick or something. Alright. But the evolution of that. I'm putting it onto a stand. Being surrounded with them. With ride, crash and china. And stuff like that. Those are types of symbols. Made out of brass, okay, to evolve to a guy sitting on a drum seat behind a drum set? Oh, nay, nay. Oh, nay, nay. Oh, nay, nay. Okay. Having cymbals, psalteries, and harps, stringed instruments, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them 120 priests sounding with trumpets wind instrument. It came even to pass as the trumpeteers and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. How in days can you honestly believe that contemporary Christian rap Christian rap like you brought up brother okay and you do the research okay where does rap come from African witchcraft hmm? 
Where does a lot of the drum beats, the voodoo? I could do, I could do that with my feet, just like that, okay? It's carnal, it's fleshly, okay? And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music with a K and praised the Lord saying for he is good for his mercy endureth forever that then the house was filled with a cloud even the house of the Lord so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. See, there's a type of music there's a type of song that the Lord obviously clearly enjoys. And that music is due, it has nothing to do with flesh. Okay? Flesh. Singing on to the Lord is contrary to our flesh. That's why so many of you, so many, See this? That's why so many of you find it difficult to step away from certain types of music. Even this disgusting Christian music. Dude, like I said, okay, you're going to listen to contemporary Christian. Here's the thing. You know that song by Turd Day? Cry out to Jesus. Lost people like that. Lost people liked. I can only imagine. Okay? See, psalms, psalms, hymns, spiritual songs of the Lord do exactly that. They magnify the Lord. They're not of our flesh. They're not. Okay? That's why lost people don't really like hymns, songs, and spiritual songs. But, oh, you play them that third day, huh? You play them that mercy me, huh? <laughs> or what about, you know, Mr. Alan Jackson singing hymns? What about Johnny Cash, huh? Whose last song was hurt by Nine Inch Nails? Hmm? Oh, 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 what about Elvis? What about Whitney Houston? Sure. The devil, you like the devil singing your hymns, huh? Second Chronicles 7, verses 4 on the verse 7. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. And King Solomon offered a sacrifice of twenty and two thousand and an hundred and twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. And the priests waited on their offices. The Levites also with instruments of music of the Lord, which David the king had made to praise the Lord because his mercy endureth forever. King David made instruments of music to praise the Lord. Ibanez, Gibson, Pearl, Marshall, Pasty, Zildjian. They make instruments to praise the flesh. Those are types of cymbals, drums, guitars, amplifiers, microphones, and stuff like that. Okay? Those aren't made to praise the Lord, dear friend. Those are made to praise the flesh. And who is it who is all concerned about the things of the flesh and not of God? When David praised their ministry, when David praised by their ministry, and the priests sounded trumpets before them, and all Israel stood. What are we reading to? Seven. Moreover, Solomon hollowed the middle court 
that was before the house of the Lord. For there he offered burnt offerings and the fat of the peace offerings because the brazen altar which Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offerings and the meat offerings and the fat. But look at what happens when you listen to the music, carnal music, which is contemporary Christian music. You're snapping your fingers, if you do that, you get that. Okay? Okay? You, you know, you know, you get to, get to tapping, your feet get to tapping. To this day, my feet will, my wife will testify to that. Be sitting out there just so you know, just doing something and my feet will be, <laughs> she's at, uh, you tap into a hymn, Brad? Not, not, no, I'm sorry, that's kind of a habit. Okay? Even Brother Alexander seen me do that. Okay? And remember, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I, hold on, let's go to that. That's Psalm 101. Um, this thing about cleaving, okay? I forget how old I was when I um, heard Back in Black. I've never forgotten it. Um, I could probably, if I wanted to, and I'm not going to. Um, uh, let me see. Psalm 101. Hmm. Verse 1 on verse 3. I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. I think I might have written this down. Someone else. No, no, I didn't. Okay. I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing unto the Lord. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart, a heart that belongs unto the Lord, not sinlessly perfect. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. I forget how old I was when I heard Back in Black by ACDC. I still have, I still have those um, lyrics in my head. Metallica? Uh, fortunately? One of my favorite bands before the Lord saved me was Fear Factory. Okay? Uh, and they're all, you know, double bass and whatnot like that. Uh, those beats, it cleaves to you. Cleaves to you. Like dung on the bottom of your shoe. Cry out to Jesus by third day. Who, as I understand it, they're Christians, right? Uh, they uh, they did, uh, what did they do? They did some kind of an Ozzy Osbourne cover song or something like that. <laughs> and, uh, um, there was this thing called Christian death metal. <laughs> Christian metal. Christian rap. And it's all flesh. It's all flesh. It's all about flesh, people. And see, that which praises the Lord is contrary to your flesh. And, and you people in these phallus houses, you're just annoyed because you're being programmed. You know, stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down. This is when you're supposed to be like, oh, oh. And they play the melodic music when they come and offer, uh, we want a medicinal offering, a tithe offering, got to pay to play. And they got the, they're usually with the piano, which is a stringed instrument. It is a stringed instrument, playing the piano, and they always got the visual stimuli with the, you know, the, I saw that over here uh, before. It's like the girl standing up there like, oh, 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 Lord, give us all this money. Using music to manipulate subliminal messages. You know, at least Slipknot at least came out openly and said that's what they were doing. Back, I forget, in the 80s, it was uh, Judas Priest, Rob Halford, and the backmasking thing came up with uh, subliminal messages because some kid decided to chew on a shotgun shell or something like that, blew his head off. Uh, because he was listening to Judas Priest, okay? Back, that was in the 80s when uh, D. Snyder of Twisted 
sister. Okay. Uh, you know, sat before Congress. Uh, the law. That, that, that guy is such a wicked devil. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. But there are subliminal messages in music. Binaural. Both ears. Okay. Mic microphone instruments. The bass guitar. They work at a frequency that can open you to suggestion. The, and, you know, your brain sends electrical currents through the spine, okay? Your body does have electrical current, okay? What do you think they use for the, uh, uh, also for, like, the, um, uh, what do they call them? Thing? Those things you walk through, uh, the, 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 the detector things, you know? What do you think they use? They, they bounce off of your electrical currency, okay? You introduce something at a frequency or a megahertz, at that frequency, open to suggestion. Okay? All right? And then you add to it magnified. See? See? See how that works? See how that works? It's that easy. It's that dangerous. That's why we as saints, you know, and the, the devil, our adversary, knows exactly what he's doing, man. Uh, I've I've done videos where I've, I'm uploading, and I, I don't search for this stuff. <laughs> I know better. But surprise, surprise, I'll see on the side there, Fear Factory. <laughs> yeah, Fear Factory. Mm -hmm. It tempted me. Yeah. And what happens? What happens, Saint? What happens? You get into a grocery store. That's why I, I love what Brother Alexander does. He, he'll, he, doesn't, he doesn't care. Uh, and he knows exactly what, what we're talking about right here. He'll, that man, he'll, he'll start singing out and he doesn't care. <laughs> he did it in line at the Dollar Tree the one day. It was beautiful. I was behind him and he just he didn't care. <laughs> he just started singing to him. People were looking at him. I'm like, yeah, brother. <laughs> there you go. You know, but, you know, you go into the store. They got the music going on. That's harmless, yeah? Saint, what happens? You go home, you leave that, and it's stuck in your head. That's why I like my little earbuds. I walk around with them. Okay. <laughs> I don't have to hear that stuff. Okay, listening to the scriptures, the Psalms, or something like that. Okay? A lot better for us. A whole lot better for us. Now, lamentations. We have seen that singing, praising unto the Lord, is something that is for we to sing praise unto the Lord. Absolutely. And that is something God is obviously pleading. Well, obviously. Okay? There is a contrast. Go to Lamentations. Like I tell you, see? You want to scare sin out of you? You want to scare sin out of you? Read, read Lamentations sometime. You, you're, you're, uh, you're dealing with the sin. You're, you're just about to give in and, and commit that sin that you know God hates and that you know you're going to pay a price for and that you can't wash with enough Lava soap to get the grime off of you. <laughs> Read the book of Lamentations. That'll scare you. But Lamentations 3, 55 on to 63. Now remember the whole context of Lamentations. This is God brutally chastising the apple of his eye after he warned and warned and warned and pleaded not oh, oh please no you're guilty if you don't quit this stuff i'm going to destroy you that's when you read scripture and you come across plead it's never this sissy oh please don't no no it's an authoritative a lawyer before the judge you're guilty you're not innocent and if you keep this up you're doomed that's what pleading means in scripture, not what Christianity tells you. 
They tried to, the Christianity has tried to emasculate God. Wow, good luck with that. Okay, but Lamentations 3, verses 55 on to 63. And, and dude, you got to remember, I was a drummer. I played before people. I was in bands of robbers. Okay, all right, I've done that. I've experienced, I've played to people before. Okay, not like one of these guys who hasn't experienced it or even done it. Okay? I called upon thy name, O Lord, out of the low dungeon. Thou hast heard my voice. Hide not thy ear at my breathing, at my cry. Thou drawest near, thou drewest near. In the day that I called upon thee, thou saidest, fear not. O Lord, Thou hast pleaded the causes of my soul. Okay, remember, get in your, get this stupid <laughs> thing out of your mind when it comes to plead. When you see plead in Scripture, you know, sear it in your head. A lawyer with the finger pleading, pleading to you. You're guilty. You're guilty. You're guilty. You're guilty. I'm warning you. I'm warning you. You're guilty. You better stop or I'm going to hurt you. Okay? O Lord, thou hast pleaded the causes of my soul. Thou hast redeemed my life. O Lord, thou hast seen my wrong. Judge thou my cause. Thou hast seen all their vengeance and all their imaginations against me. <laughs> Thou hast heard their reproach, O Lord, and all their imaginations against me. Twice mentioned. Twice mentioned. For the description box, okay? The lips of those that rose up against me and their device against me all the day. Behold, they're sitting down and they're rising up. I am their music. Contrast now. The people who were destroying Jerusalem, the people who were doing these things to Israel at the sight of their misery to the persecutors, they were their music. Ah, ah, uh, uh, Lamentations 5, 7 on to 16. Our fathers have sinned and are not, and we have borne their iniquities. Well, yeah, my father did it, and he passed it on to me, so I'm not totally at fault. You know, I mean, I, I am a little. But see, in Lamentations, they're like, yeah, our father sinned, but guess what? I pulled the trigger. Where you got some of these Christians who are doing academic stuff right in front of your face. Right in front of you. Okay, yeah, I sinned, but that's how I was taught, or that's what I heard. So it's why don't you why don't you drop that part of it and just be like, hey, I messed up. I can blame no one but me. It's my fault. I did it. I'm to blame. But no, no. See, you gotta be a little endemic, don't you? You gotta be well. Yeah, yeah I did. But see, I, I learned from him, and he learned from him. And he learned. Ain't no man. And that ain't no behavior of a saint. Yeah, brother. Yeah. Servants have ruled over us. There is none that deliver us out of their hand. 
We get our bread with the peril of our lives because of the sword of the wicked, of because of the sword of the wilderness. Our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine. They ravished the women in Zion and the maids in the cities of Judah. What are we reading to? Um, 16. Princes are hanged up by their hand. The faces of elders were not honored. They took the young men to grind, and the children fell under the wood. The elders have ceased from the gate, the young men from their music. Why? Obviously because of judgment. The joy of our heart is ceased. Our dance is turned into mourning. The crown is fallen from our head. Woe unto us that we have sinned. And see, what is implied there, the joy of our music, uh, the, um, the young men from their music, the joy of our heart is ceased. So, and this is right, you know, this is when Nebuchadnezzar came and what the snot out of them. And right before that happened, what was the spiritual climate of Israel. Ooh, idolatry to the height. So their songs and their music that they were doing. I bet you it was a little fleshly. Even though they had the scriptural hymn book. Now go to Daniel. Now we see, we saw here in Ezekiel 3 that Music also can be counterfeited because there is a type of music that is clearly, you know, to be used and to praise the Lord. But there is also another, an anti, to replace and to be against. Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. Got a little reading to do here. Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 18. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold, whose height was three score cubits, and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. An image, phallus, an obelisk. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent to gather together the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. Then the, okay? then the princes, the governors, and captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Now, there are some out there that argue this is a statue of Nebuchadnezzar. No, it's not. It's a phallus. An obelisk. Okay? I'm not holding the punches with you. It's a phallus. That's what an obelisk is. You know, the one that Reagan, uh, they took him from the one end of the White House and moved it to that one in front of the obelisk to show the Jesuits that they have in that they have taken control of all the churches. Huh? The obelisk that is in Rome. It's an uncircumcised phallus. Let's not let's be adults here. Okay? So Nebuchadnezzar was calling these dudes. To worship a phallus. You see a lot of churches that have the steeple. And you Christian want to go into that. <laughs> Roll up another one, buddy. Okay? Then a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet. Now stop. 
hear sound, musical instruments. Worship the image. An image made from an example of something totally fleshly. Roll that around in your head for a little bit. Okay? As you're singing, I can only imagine. Or, on that night, I got miracle. <laughs> la 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 la. What a, a third day. Take offense, take a gate there, Christian. You wonder why you're so messed up. That at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music? Oh, are these the instruments that David created? You might want to argue, well, some are, but the point is, these instruments of music, we already saw. Instruments of music being used for what? The proper way to praise the Lord. Now we're seeing instruments of music to praise flesh, people. The cornet, flute, harp, cornet and flute. Cornet, I think, is a wind instrument. Same with the flute. Harp, sackbutt, sackbutt, I think, is a type of the... A wind instrument like the, the the thing that you Scotsmen use or uh, whatever that's called uh, what is that called bagpipes I think don't quote me on that okay psaltery string instrument dulcimer dulcimer is a, like a little miniature uh, acoustic guitar with a rounded thing uh, my brother actually used to have a dulcimer okay and also there I, I think also a dulcimer can be a a flat variation of it, I think. But regardless, a dulcimer is a stringed instrument. Okay? And all kinds of music. So you have a wind string and a wind string, wind and stringed music. Yeah, uh, instruments. Yes. Then at what time do you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer? And all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, has set up. And you read the story about Isis horse set or whatever it is about the golden phallus, about oh um oh I forget who it was. It started with an H. I I haven't read that in a while, but you know okay. So Nebuchadnezzar has built a golden phallus. And when he, he has the guys play music, everyone is to bow down and worship a golden phallus. And I'm being graphic, but let's be adults. The phallus is purely flesh, isn't it? Sorry, but think about think about that in regards to music, people. There is a music with a K that our Lord, our Father Jesus Christ enjoys. That is a glory to him. There is another type of music that is no glory to the Lord, but is all about flesh. And whosoever falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, sultry, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. We have to read this part, too. Because, okay, instruction in righteousness. Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Okay, king's meat. King's meat, I believe that's the... Uh, video. I'll put that in the description box where we talk about this. Defiled by the king's meat. Okay. Um, push came to shove. You gotta do, you gotta worship who we tell you to worship the way we tell you to worship with 
what kind of music we tell you to. Because that's Christian. God, God's not a God of specificity. Uh, <laughs> okay? All right. Wherefore at that time certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spake and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Mwah, 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 mwah. Little brown on their nose. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And look at modern music. Look at your blues. Look at your jazz. Look at your reggae. Look at your pop. Look at your rap. Look at your rock and roll, which is uh, meaning relations in the back seat of car. Look at heavy metal. Look at death metal. Look at industrial metal. Okay? All right? Even some classical. Even some classical. And I, lo I love classical music. I do. But even some of that. Even some of that. Okay? And whosoever, and whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery, fiery furnace. Instruction in righteousness. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the providence of Babylon. Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Gods. Golden image. Oh boy. <laughs> one plus one plus one. Yeah. Then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they were brought then they brought these men before the king. And the time comes and the time will come when they will they will kill you thinking that they do God's service. You're so hateful and judgmental. You're causing division. You're against Christ's mass. Praise the Lord, I am. <laughs> You're causing division. No. You're a compromising charlatan lying half-wit twit. I don't think you're saved. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? The Hebraic Jews. The apple of God's eye. See a golden phallus. They're like, Dude. <laughs> what? Uh, dude. Uh, hello. <laughs> hello, McFly. Is this on? <laughs> now, if ye be ready, compromise. Save your, save your rear end, huh? Now, if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kind of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. And who is that capitally G God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Oh, do you think that the Lord had a little indignation at Nebuchadnezzar for that? I do. He says, he says something like that. <laughs> the Lord's like, Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah, you think so, don't you, sweetheart? And of course, and you, and you go on to read about, you know, the fourth man who was, the, you know, uh, uh, pre-carnation or whatever. Of, it was the Lord, the Father in the fire with them, the fourth man, um, uh, uh, a pre-carnation of Jesus, okay? Okay? Anyway. Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Uh, these guys fear God. It is better to fear God than to fear men. Hey, hey, hey you want to you wanna keep your little building open? Yeah, do what we say. Huh? You want to have peace? Compromise. 
Go down and worship the phallus. If so, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Verse 18. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, and here's where you and I, saints, ought to stand, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. You and I, Saint, we, and we're going to address this uh, probably either tomorrow or Friday, uh, one of the videos, uh, because, you know, you know, compromising, compromising, you know, peace with all men, so compromise, right? Hey, you want peace with all men? Compromise. what they do? We ain't worshiping your gods, and we're not bowing down to a phallus. We're not bowing down to flesh. And this whole other thing now that we have just seen about a different type of music to worship flesh. Whereas a music in use to praise and worship the Father. Ezekiel 28. You've heard, as I what is the devil's music so good? Well, you say that, number one, because you're ignorant or lost. Or number two, well, number two, because it's fleshly. Ezekiel 28, 11 unto 19. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Now, He's talking to Tyrus, but Tyrus wasn't where? Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. You know, when Peter said, this will be far from thee, and Satan says, Look, get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest the things that be of men and not of God. I might have just got that backwards. But see, the Lord was addressing the driving force behind Peter. The Lord is addressing the driving spirit, we should say, Satan, behind Tyrus. Because Tyrus wasn't in the Garden of Eden. We don't know where the Garden of Eden was because you remember that little thing called the flood happened. Okay, so thou hast been in Eden, the Garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of thy tabrets, and thy pipe was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Whitney Houston had a set of pipes on her. Uh, Pav Pavarotti, he, oh, that guy could belt out. He, could, he had a set of pipes on him where he could sing without magnification louder than an orchestra. Pipes. Ha, 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 ha. We've addressed this before that there are, you know, some say that Satan was the head of the heavenly choir. Uh, and this is, the, this is the closest you can get to that. All this tells you is that Lucifer, son of the morning, had something to do with music, obviously. Because, hey, think of Proverbs 7. The harlot who goes out to meet this guy, or who is void of understanding, with her fair speech, her words, causes them to yield. You know, nothing else matters by Metallica. Soft, smooth, causes you to yield. Uh, fade to black. Or, or not, um, Fate the Black by Metallica, I think it was. Song about suicide. Okay. I'm going through changes. By okay. You get the point?
Yes. And the workman of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Satan knows what the Lord looks like. And that does not mean that the depiction of Jesus that you see is accurate. Remember, Satan is anti. Okay? He is against and replaces with himself. Just like the Catholic, the antinomianist, the sinless perfectionist, and every other denomination of Christianity. They replace God with themselves. They are their own gods. Okay? Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. No marvel, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. I will cast thee to the ground, I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic, with a K. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. You are your own enemy. You'll destroy the, 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 the enemies. <coughs> Always shoot themselves in the foot sooner or later, bro. <coughs> and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. And they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be anymore. Oh, yeah. Isaiah. Isaiah. See, when you're carnal, being fleshly, you're behaving like the devil. Okay? And you're a Christian, okay, and not a saint. Um, you are of your father, the devil. You heard me say it. There are saints out there who, for whatever reason, don't want to drop the word Christian. That's your problem, okay? That's your problem. But generally, Christianity is not... No. Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered onto the saints. Okay? It, it isn't. I mean, atheists, Muslims, uh, Hindus, and Buddhists, and all that, they could pretty much figure that one out themselves. Except the Christians, of course. Isaiah 14, verses 9, on to verse 15. Here, now, pay attention to this. Vile. Violin. I like, a vi I like the violin. Oh, the violin is, is beautiful, hypnotic. The frequency of the pick, pitch of the bow going across the string frequency it could be used to charm it could be used to seduce it could be used to suggest in suggestion and as a brother pointed out to me and you're right because the scripture is right um vials i like the violin violin is beautiful it's captivating it's enchanting. It's charming. Hmm. And we're going to see, coming up, that vile scripturally is not spoken of in a good connotation. Let's find out. Isaiah 14, 9, on to verse 15. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. Hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. What are you going there for, stupid? Okay. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones 
all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials. V-I-O-L-S. Violins, the stringed instrument. Now, from verse 9 to right there, context, people. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. It's not looking too good. Okay, but let's continue. The, thy pomp is brought down to the grave. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And the noise of thy vials, the worm is spread under me, under thee, and the worms cover thee. Where the worm dieth not, and the fire is never quenched. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, hell's not eternal. <laughs> uh, that's not funny. Yeah, hell's not eternal, huh? Yeah. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which, which didst weaken the nations? There is no I after the D and between the S. You're right. Working on it. For thou hast said in thine heart, Catholic, antinomianist, Calvinist, Christian, <laughs> Buddhist, Islam, Pentecostal, sinless perfection, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. All things are lawful for me. All things are lawful for me. We've always done it like this. It's tradition, man. We're gonna. I'm gonna do this. Because it's lawful for me. No, it's not all expedient. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. See, you say a stupid statement. Well, why is the devil's music so much better than the Lord's? Number one, it isn't. Number two, the reason you think that either you're a novice or lost, and three, the music that worships flesh is just that. It worships flesh. It's all about flesh. Okay, the big band era in the 30s, you know, the hoppity hoppity, even country, bluegrass. I mean, I've been around some of the good old boys out West Virginia when they got that, that picking, the banjo and stuff like that. And they get that, dun, 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 you know, that kind of stuff. The speed and stuff like that. You know? It's fleshly. It's fleshly, people. You're better off, Christian. Okay. See, you, you think the lesser of two evils. It's like the difference between Coke and Diet Coke, right? They both kill you. But the, le but the lesser of two evils. And hey, they're talking about Jesus. Oh, what's that stupid song? I'm going to go to the... I got a friend named Jesus. Whoa, hold on there, spunky britches. What Jesus are you talking about? Some of you people out there think just because somebody mentions the name Jesus in a song, they are his Christian. And you're right, it is. You're right, it is. Remember, Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. It's not. Okay? It's not. But again, there are a lot of you out there, you hear some contemporary music, and they say, Jesus, you, you melt in your chair. See, you're worshiping flesh and Satan has interjected the name of Jesus, and you think it's all hunky dory. 
Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. And, well, Lucifer, well, that's, you know, you know, Satan had many sons. Uh, I'm sure he does. But, uh, I, you know, well, Lucifer and Satan are different. I, I'm surprised little uh, sweetheart from Canada hasn't pulled that one yet. <laughs> I, I'm surprised. Uh, Revelation 12, 9 and 10. Lucifer, son of the morning. Uh, Revelation 12, 9 and 10. Not John. I'm sorry. Revelation 12. <laughs> I was looking at that. What? <laughs> Revelation 12, 9 and 10. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent from the Garden of Eden. Called the devil and Satan. Which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. And the angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down. Satan, accuser, tempter. Which accused them before our God day and night. Why does the devil's music sound better? Because it's fleshly and you're either a babe or you're lost. Or 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 you just you you know, all things are lawful for you and you, you wanna get Hey! See, you gotta avoid that stuff like the plague. A saint can listen to something carnal and yes, what happens? Dude, come on, saint. What happens? Turn on that radio. That spirit of radio. The prince of the power of the air. Hello, McFly. And then what happens? You're driving along, tapping on your steering wheel, tapping your foot. Then you get out, and then that song stuck in your head. Cleaves to you. Cleaves to you. Vile. Isaiah 5. We're going to look at vile. Every appearance of the word. It's four. Vile. Isaiah 5, 11 and 12. We're looking at both the singular and the plural. Okay? Isaiah 5, 11 and 12. <laughs> vile. Viol I like the violin. It's beautiful. Scripturally, what are you, what are you going to do with this thing? What are you going to do with this? I have heard um, some orchestra things where violins were not present. I have. I have. There are some pieces out there where there is no violin involved. Um, but you got to remember, what's, what's our standard, Saint? What's our standard? My standard is the authorized version. Okay? I think we ought to avoid the violin hearing it. Because think about it. You could be sitting there, and the, the, the lovely sound that it makes, it's so uh, um, enchanting. It's so charming. Okay? I, I will go as far as to say it's bewitching. Verses 11 and 10 in Isaiah 5. Look at, right away, context. Woe unto them. Woe! It begins with woe. <laughs> unto them that rise up early in the morning that they may follow strong drink that continue until night till wine inflame them and the harp and the vial the tabret the pipe and wine are in their feast now you cutie pie might say oh Brad it says harp and tabret and pipe there so is that up the We've already seen harp tabret appear elsewhere in a good God connotation. Okay? That which is good, Satan, you know, these instruments, Satan can use for his glory. 
to worship flesh. You can. Okay? We've already seen harp and tabret in the good, good God connotation. So take your little cutie pie self and go pound some sand and take a long walk off of a short pier. Okay? But vile. Only appears four times. In this context. And the harp and the vial and the tab and the harp and the vial, the tabret and pipe and wine are in their feasts, but they regard not the work of the Lord, neither consider the operations of his hands. And pipe. Pipe. Now you could say, well, pipe organ or whatnot. Okay, yes, you could say that. Alright? Yes. And remember, the organ, pipe, is a wind instrument. Hence, thy tabrets and thy ah, pipes, a wind instrument. Okay? You might, you know, like the xylophone, like there are these, I've seen it. There's this one uh, woman who has these multicolored plastic tubes that, you know, that are pipes. Okay? All right? Uh, that's, no, that's not what that's talking about. It's a wind instrument reference there. But as concerning vial, V-I-O-L, mm. Amos chapter 5, Amos chapter 5, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Amos, chapter 5, verses 21, 1 to 27. This, this, this shouts right at you. I hate, I despise your feast days. We're not going to mention besides this December 25th. And I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs. For I will not hear the melody of thy vials. It's not looking good for vile. <laughs> Scripturally. It, 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 it isn't. What are you going to do with that? All things are lawful for me. I know you'd say that. But Saint, what do you do with that? What do you do with that? Oh, Brad, you're making a big deal. I hate, I despise your feast days. Verse 23. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs. So these guys were making songs to the Lord that he didn't approve of. Oh, gee. Wow. Wow. I can only imagine. Cry out to Jesus. And on that night, he got him a miracle. I got a friend named Jesus. This isn't rocket science. But see, I remember certain people a couple years ago, they got up all in arms about this. And just as they like to do, just as if I, just like lost people like to do, just as if I, the, again, the antinomianist, they'll do anything, they'll go anywhere in Scripture and take things out of context, not rightly divide the word of truth, even though they say they do, but they don't, um, to justify their sin. So, 23 there is, uh, I will not hear the melody of thy vials. We're going to look a little at melody as well, okay? Melody, all right? How things flow together, all right? But let judgment run down as waters, and righteousness as a mighty stream. Have ye offered unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness forty years, O house of Israel? Look at verse 26. 
but ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and Chuin, your images, the star of your God, which ye made to yourselves. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You like your turd day, don't you? You like your mercy me. Oh, what's that uh, right guy? Uh, and all those Chris contemporary Christian people uh, casting crowns or, <laughs> or whatever, whatever. That's stupid. And we see in verse 23 there are, there are um, songs, music that God hates. And you think devils like Turd Day, that imbecile from Mercy Me, you think God's happy with that? The little G God of this world who, whom you're actually worshiping when you uh, enjoy that kind of stuff. You, you're better off, Christian. You want your, get, forget your CCM. At least, you know, the, the Rolling Stones are being, at least they're up front that they're not pretending to be something that they're not. You'd probably be a little bit better for yourself. I'm not recommending that you do, but hey, it's the same source. It's the same thing with a different mask on. Period. Therefore will I cause you to go into captivity beyond Damascus, said the Lord, whose name is the God of hosts. Ready for one more? <laughs> Amos chapter 6, verses 1 on verse 6. So, Three out of four. Three. Mention of the vile. Not good. Whoa. Context. Whoa. To them that are at ease in Zion. Get up there. Clap your hand. Think, oh, I'm so, look at how God has blessed me. Look at, boasting themselves through God instead of boasting God through themselves. There's a big, big Big difference. But see, that's a subtle thing. That's a subtle thing. Got that putz who's boasting himself through God. Rather, God through himself. And see, the difference is subtle. It's subtle. But when you have yourself have a pride problem and you are, are contrite and take responsibility... It's easy to spot. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion and trust in the mountain of Samaria, which are named chief of the nations, to whom the house of Israel came. And think about it. You and I, saints, we sing unto the Lord to praise Him. These guys do it the same thing, but to praise what? Flesh. Stand up, sit down! Get all solemn and touch their heartstrings with uh, melodic music to give money. Here a ten minute thing. Stand up, sit down. Mind control. Being herded like cattle. Pass ye on to Kalnik and see. And from thence go ye to Hamath the great. Then go down to Gath of the Philistines. Be they better than these kingdoms? Or their border greater than your border? Ye that put far away the evil day, and cause the seed of violence to come near, that lie on beds of ivory, and stretch themselves upon their couches, and eat the lambs, note that, of the flock, and the calves out of the midst of the stall, that chant to the sound of the vile, and invent to themselves instruments of music like... David, like David, anti, to replace and to be against, similar, the drum set, modern drum set, the evolution of the timbrel, you could say, yeah, yeah, that drink wine in bowls, and anoint themselves with the chief ointments, but they are not grieved for the affliction of Joseph. 
the chant to the sound of the viol and invent to themselves instruments of music like David. Like I said, I was a drummer and um, modern drums are an abomination to God. I'm a drummer. Used to be a drummer, excuse me. I, I still got it. I told you all. Uh, a year or so ago, I got to play a drum set with a double bass pedal, and I played. I thought I was going to have a heart attack afterwards. But uh, some girl, it's like, you still got it. That freaked me out, man. It's like, and you know, the Lord, it's like, you want it, okay? And I, I, I did. I thought I was going to die that day. My heart, because, you know, playing the drums, you know, is very physical. It's a very physical thing to do. Okay? It's very physical. But yeah, I, I, you know, it cleaves to me. Drum sets, drummers today, the drumming that is today is an abomination to God. Take fence in the gate, boy! And the, well, the tabret. The tabret was a circular thing that had symbols in it with a skin over it. Okay? Bongos uh, are not mentioned in Scripture. Okay? The evolution, evolution of the instrument and invents, invent to themselves instruments of music just like they made their, uh, their Moloch and their Chun, the star of their images. They created their own gods because they were at ease. It's like, you know, hey, man. And also, you have the trumpet, which is a wind instrument. The psaltery, a string instrument. A harp, string instrument. String instruments. Now, stringed instrument. Piano. You hit the key, it hits the string. The piano is a stringed instrument. Some will argue, no, that's a key. What is the key hitting? It's hitting a tightened string. Okay? The piano is a stringed instrument. You can argue all day, you know, it's a, it's a key. And what are the keys? What are the little things in there hitting? They're hitting a string. It's a stringed instrument that has keys. Sure it does. But it is ultimately a stringed instrument, people. Okay? But the stringed instrument, the modern guitar, you're going to be hard-pressed to find in Scripture something against the guitar. Now, uh, for example, there is a brother of ours who did hymns playing the guitar. Well, because he didn't look at his fingers on the fretboard, but he looked and sang without looking. That, that takes some skill to do that. I can do that. I tried to play guitar before. I always had to, or I, I always had to look at my fingers on the fretboard. Okay, because I didn't, I mean, I could play drums really, really good. But the uh, finger on the fretboard, I couldn't do that. Okay, this brother, he could play the guitar and do the things on the fretboard and not look. That, that's something to that. But see, personally now, in stringed instruments, we see that Satan also will use the instruments that God ordained to worship him for his worship. We have already seen that. But, for example... The acoustic guitar, acoustic, using acoustic sound, of course. Um, okay, that, uh, I don't think you're, I mean, it's when you uh, amplify the guitar with distortion. See, when you, I've been around, my, my brother Jim, uh, my brother, uh, he can play the guitar. Our one brother, and that the guy I mentioned, my actual flesh brother, not my brother in Christ. Okay, uh, he can play the guitar. The one brother can play the guitar. Um, I've heard people do hymns with a 12 string acoustic. Beautiful. Okay, you can amplify an acoustic. And see, that's the thing. An acoustic doesn't require false magnification as from an amplifier. You can get something like a humbucker, and that's what it's called, 
uh, a type of pickup for a guitar. And you can put it in that little thing where the acoustic, the sound, reverberates within the guitar. And you can amplify it. See, when you amplify a stringed instrument to a certain megahertz in frequency, that is where the danger comes where you can mess with the heart rhythm, you can get the flesh going because of the frequency in the megahertz. With a regular acoustic guitar, I mean, yeah, there are, see, you, I've, I've seen it. You know, some of those uh, um, maracha uh, guys, you know, you know, playing their guitar. I mean, they get really, and they got the big acoustic guitars. But see, there again, that, that is not amplified as with an amplifier. When you start amplifying, things that mess with electrical currents within the body that's the danger that's the reason why you ain't doing hymns anymore brother uh, that's between you and the Lord but Psalm 150 praise ye Lord praise God in his sanctuary praise him in the firmament firmament of his power Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Okay? There are those out there that talk about, you know, da all dancing is wicked. It's when you, you know, like the salsa and some of this stuff. Okay? We're not going to get off on that. A lot of the, especially modern dance, even ballet. Ballet, you know, the, the women t walking on their tiptoes, why don't they just get taller women? But, I mean, the sensual, provocative poses. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I have seen Hebraic dancing that, you know, is more resemblant of something, dare I say, a little bit more wholesome. But then again, like I said, that we're not going to talk about dancing. We're not going to talk about dancing. Okay. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbal. And cymbals, the, the width and the pitch of the dome on it can alter the sound. Okay. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. So we see stringed instruments in use of what? Okay? Isaiah 38. Isaiah 38. Verses 15 on the 20. Isaiah 38. 15 on the 20. What shall I say? He hath both spoken unto me, and himself hath done it. I shall go softly all my years in the bitterness of my soul. Isaiah 38, 15 through 20. Yep. O Lord, by these things men live, and in all these things is the life of my spirit. So wilt thou recover me. This is Hezekiah when the Lord gave him 15 years because he wept, you know, keep me alive. And what happened in those 15 years? Manasseh! Behold, for peace I had great bitterness, but thou hast in love to my soul delivered it from this pit of corruption, for thou hast cast all my sins behind thy back. For the grave cannot praise thee, death cannot celebrate thee. They that go down into the pit cannot hope for thy truth. You, any of you out there who like death metal, okay, I used to like death metal, okay. Death cannot praise thee, the wages of sin is death. There is a death metal band from Sweden called Grave, okay? Okay? And if you're dead, if you're dead in trespasses and sins, you can't truly praise the Lord. But you think you can when you have your CCM going and you, your third day and your mercy me and your, your casting crowns. Yeah! Yeah, see, that's how you guys get around it. See, you're worshiping flesh, yourselves. You know, you're of your father, the devil. <laughs> For the grave cannot praise thee. Death cannot celebrate thee. 
They that go down into the pit cannot hope for thy truth. That's a pretty good statement there. The living, the living, he shall praise thee. As I do this day, the father of the ch the father to the children shall make known thy truth. The Lord was ready to save me. Therefore will we sing my songs, to my songs, to the string instruments all the days of our life in the house of the Lord. What happened in the 15 years of um, that he was given? <laughs> oh, that, that'd be King Manasseh. One of the worst kings in the history of Israel. Who's in heaven today? I totally believe that. Amen. Amen. Ephesians. Now here's the. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Got a little ahead. Habakkuk 3. Just one verse. Habakkuk 3. Oh. Habakkuk 3. One verse. Verse 19. Uh, now we'll just, re we'll just stay with verse 19. You can. We'll read 17 on the 19. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like his feet. And he will make me to walk upon mine high places to the chief singer on my string instruments. Musician, by the way. Musician. Musician. Musicians appear in Scripture. The plural. And this is where you got to watch out with King James Bible Online. Double check this yesterday. The word musicians, according to King James Bible Online, appears 15 or no, 55 times in Scripture. Check this out. Here's your homework assignment. Go to King James Bible Online and put in the term musician. You know what you're going to see? You're gonna, I'm going to show you an example. Psalm 4. They tell you, you go to King James Bible Online. They tell you that the word mus musician is in Psalms verse 4, in Psalms 4 verse 1. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Okay, go ahead. Check it out. They tell you that the word musician appears in Psalms 4 verse 1. Psalms 4 verse 1. Hear me when I call, O God, of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. Oh, how about Psalm 6, verse 1? You check King James Bible online. They tell you that musician is in verse 1. O Lord, rebuke me not in thine anger, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. The word loves appears twice in Scripture. The King James Bible Online tells you it appears three times. One of them is in the heading of the chapter or whatever, wherever that appears. I don't because it's not in Scripture. The word musician. Check this out. So go ahead. Fact check me, boy. The word musician does not appear in text of, in the text of scripture. You know where it appears? And this is why this is why you also need to have a strong concordance. Okay? See this? Whoop, 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 whoop. Watch that. Watch that. See this? All right, where is that? Okay. You see this in uh, uh, the sixth right there where it says to the chief musician that's in the heading. That's not verse 1. You see that? Also here, verse 4, uh, Psalm 4, verse 1. It's not there in the verse itself. It's in the heading. It's in the heading of the psalm. It's not in the actual verse itself. And every appearance of the word 
musician that you will see as given by King James Online. Every Check it out! Don't believe me. Check it out. Every single one. It's in the heading of the thing there of the psalm, not in the text of Scripture. The word musician itself is not in the text of Scripture. Musicians is, but musician itself is not. It's in the heading. And with that, I've heard, I've talked about with you, that the to the Hebraic Jews, the Psalms were the Hebraic Jewish hymn book. And when you just take the example, Psalm 4 in the heading, to the chief musician on Negenoth, a psalm of David. Psalm 5, to the chief musician upon Negenoth, a psalm of David. Psalm 6, okay, okay, to the chief musician on Negenoth, upon Shemineth, or whatever, a psalm of David. The, uh, psalm 8, and this is, it appears 55 times. In the heading, not in the text of Scripture. Watch it with that. Because according to King James Bible Online, love appears three times in Scripture. It appears twice in the text of Scripture, once in the heading. Hence, it only appears twice in Scripture. Musician, singular, does not appear in Scripture. It appears in the heading. But also, that gives you evidence to what? Yes, the Psalms were the hymn book, as it were. And I've, I have it on my fancy schmancy hell phone. The Psalms read in Hebrew, and it's the guy who's doing it and is doing it in, in Hebrew, but he's doing it in a sung tone, as if he's singing it. I can't do that kind of thing. But that's how he does it. So this is pretty significant evidence to the least that yes, the Psalms were the hymn book to the Hebraic Jews. And incidentally, show me the Psalms that have rhyme in them. Okay? Melody! Melody! She was a weird woman. Melody, Isaiah 23, Isaiah 23, verses 13 on to verse 16, Isaiah 23, verses 13 on to verse 16, Behold, the land of the Chaldeans, this people was not till the Assyrian founded it for them that dwell in the wilderness. They set up the towers thereof, they raised up the palaces thereof, and he brought it to ruin. Howl, ye ships of Tarshish, for your strength is laid waste. And it shall come to pass in that day that Tyre shall be forgotten seventy years, according to the days of one king. After the end of seventy years shall Tyre sing as an harlot. I've come to meet thee. With loves, I got coverings of tapestry. Sing like a harlot. Take and harp. Go about the city, thou harlot that has been forgotten. Make sweet melody. Sing many songs that thou mayest be remembered. Look at that context there. A harlot making melody and singing songs that they may be remembered. Look at Johnny Cash, huh? I hurt myself today. Look at Elvis Presley. And I will always love you. Whitney Houston. Melody. Now, melody is not in and of itself a bad thing. But remember, the instruments of music that were created to serve God, Satan has taken to serve flesh. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. And the worst culprit 
dear friend. In my opinion. Dude! Okay. Heavy metal, death metal, it's death metal. Okay. We already looked. Okay. Rap. Rap. Okay. Rap is rhyming. Find me rhyme. Okay? Rhyme, rhyming can be traced back to spell casting. Okay? A lot of uh, the songs of the day, the, their, their lyrics rhyme. You figure that one out. Okay? You figure that one out. All right? All right. Isaiah 51. <laughs> Isaiah 51, 1 on the 3. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness. Ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock whence ye are hewn. That's a lowercase r, okay? And to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bare you. For I called him alone, and blessed him, and increased him. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places. And he will make her wilderness like Eden, and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein, thanksgiving and the voice of melody. We already see the two contrasts. We saw the contrast in Isaiah 23, the harlot singing and making melody, that she may be remembered. But we also see thanksgiving and the voice of melody unto the Lord. Okay? One is fleshly, one is spiritual. Okay? And the flesh lusteth against the spirit. And these are contrary, the one to the other. The only New Testament reference that we ever... You've noticed that by now, haven't you? We haven't touched once in the New Testament. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Well, that, that means it, it's just in the... You shut up. Shut up. Just the Lord rebuke you. Ephesians 5, 11 on the 21. Ephesians 5, 11 on the 21. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather approve them. What we're kind of doing. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. The veiled references of sexual copulation within rock songs and rap especially. Trying to take something that is satanic and make it Christian. You can do that. Because remember, Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. But try to take that which is uh, satanic and make it fit for saints? Oh, nay, nay. For the, okay, verse 13. But all things that are approved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools who say in the heart there is no God. All things are lawful for me. I'm going to listen to my third day, my mercy me, casting crowns and whatever. Because, hey, all things are lawful. Hey, it's glorifying Jesus. Which one there, sweetie pie? Okay. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not <coughs> unwise, <coughs> but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine. Does not say, Scripture does not prohibit <coughs> you from drinking wine. There were prohibitions in the Old Testament for certain, like uh, Nazarites and whatnot. There are no Nazarites today. Okay, there aren't, at least scripturally, are concerned. Okay, God doesn't have a problem with you using alcohol. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the capital S spirit. The problem is, like, you know, I'll drink wine for my stomach. Absolutely. 
I had a bottle of wine here uh, of a Pinot Noir. I take a sip of it. It would help my stomach. Yes, I, of course. Okay, we well, to have use a little wine for thy uh, for thy stomach sake and often I uh, infirmities. Uh, you drink red wine, it can settle your stomach. Okay, uh, the problem is a lot of us were alcoholics and abused alcohol, and we get drunk off of it. That's the problem. That's the problem with a lot of people, even with saints. You can't just have a, a sip of wine or a glass of wine. You know, you have your pasta, you have your red wine. It digests, aids with digest. Beautiful. What happens? You could be sitting there, drink one glass, drink another, drink another, feeling fine, then you do this. It, whoa, whoa. And then you have to sit down. It's like, whoa. <laughs> right? 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 Okay? Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns. This shows us that there is a difference right there because they're right there. Psalms and hymns, okay? They sang a hymn at the Last Supper and then they went out, okay? Okay? And spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. And he who trusteth in his heart is a fool. Well, when I hear uh, cry out to Jesus, my heart sings out to God. Which God? It's, you know, it's manipulating your flesh. It's not a, it is of that spirit of Antichrist. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Oh, surely it is. Yes, it is. But see, its base is fleshly. And it, the first thing mentioned there is psalms to the chief musician. The psalms were sung. I mean, we read, I read them every day. But, I mean, I got, like I said, you can find the Hebrew version of the psalms. And if you listen to it, it's sung. Okay? Psalms. There is an abounding evidence that suggests that the Psalms were indeed the fact, the hymn book for the Hebraic Jews. Psalm 136, like I said, and his mercy endureth forever. That was a repetition there, but a repetition on praising the Lord. Okay? How can you speak to yourselves in Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in your hearts to the Lord? To something that's all about worshiping a golden phallus. Ye are ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. And just because a song says Jesus doesn't mean that it is the actual Jesus they're talking about. Song. Psalm. Here's another thing too. Uh, you know, trying to look up song on uh, King James Bible online. You put song, they just give you Song of Solomon. Eh, great, great, <laughs> great. Okay. Now we're not looking at songs because songs is more than one. So we're looking at the singular appearance of the word song in Scripture. Now, what do we know is a song? Something that's structured, right? And the lyrical contact, content rhymes with each other, spell casting, and also looping in a way. It has this, it has the chorus, it has this, it has the chorus, and stuff like that. Okay, going back to certain uh, sounds and whatnot. Song in scripture. See, what you and I think is a song, it's not what God thinks is a song. Exodus 15, 1 under 2. The first appearance of the singular song in the authorized version. I did not check to see if songs come before song. It probably does. We're not going in that direction because songs is more than one song. Okay? But, Exodus 15, verses 1 under 2. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel the song on the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. 
The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song. And he has become my salvation. He is my God. I will prepare him in habitation. My Father's God and I will exalt him. Okay. Oh, Numbers 21. Numbers 21. Numbers 21, verses 17 on to 20. 17 on to 20. Then Israel sang this song. Spring up, O well, sing ye unto it. The princes digged the well, the nobles of the people digged it, by the direction of the lawgiver, with their staves, and from the wilderness they went to Ma Matana, and from Matana to Nahalil, and from Nahalil to Bamoth, and from Bamoth in the valley that is in the country of Moab, to the top of Pisgah, which looketh toward Jeshimon. That's the song that they sang. Question. Does that rhyme? Does it rhyme? No. What's the object of the song? The Lord. Okay. Check that out with rhyming as for spell casting with witches, chants, and uh, incantations. Check that out. Check that out. Check that out. Deuteronomy 31. Deuteronomy 31. Verses 16 on to 30. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and this people will rise up and go a whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land, <coughs> whither they go to be among them, and will forsake me and break my covenant which I have made with them. Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them. And I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured. And many evils and troubles shall befall them, so that they will say in that day, Are not these evils come upon us because of our because our God is not among us? And I will surely hide my face in that day for all the evils which I have which they have wrought, in that they have turned unto other gods. <coughs> now therefore write ye this song for you and teach it to children of Israel put it in their mouths that the song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel that's a pretty good definition of a song scripturally a witness spring up O Lord sing this song testimony of the Lord But today it's an affirmative, man. And today the songs, they rhyme. For when I shall have brought them into the land which I swear unto their fathers, that floweth with milk and honey, <coughs> and they shall have eaten and filled themselves and wax and fat, because Jeshurun wax fat, okay? Then will they turn unto other gods and serve them and provoke me, and break my covenant. We kind of already looked at that. And it shall come to pass, when many evils and troubles are befallen them, that this song shall testify against them as a witness, for it shall not be forgotten out of the mouths of their sea. For I know their, their imagination, which they go about. Even now, before I have brought them into the land which I swear, Moses therefore wrote this song the same day, and taught it the children of Israel. And he gave Joshua the son of Nun a charge, and said, Be strong and of a good courage, for thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land which I swear unto them, and I will be with thee. And it came to pass, 
when Moses had had made an end of writing the words of this law in a book, until they were finished, that Moses commanded the Levites which bear the ark of the covenant, saying, Take this book of the law and put it inside of the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against thee. For I know thy rebellion and thy stiff neck. Behold, while I am yet alive with you this day, ye have been rebellious against the Lord, and how much more after my death. Gather unto me all the elders, elders of your tribes and your officers, that I may speak, the <coughs> speak these words in their ears, and call heaven and earth to record against them, I said it that way purposely. For I know that after my death ye will utterly corrupt yourselves and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you. And evil will befall you in the latter days because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. Moses spake in the ears of all the congregation of Israel the words of this song until they were ended. And we're not going to read uh, Deuteronomy 32. Um, go ahead and read it. The song there. Go ahead and read it. Show me where it rhymes. Now, in language, in Hebrew, the sound thereof, whatever, but the text itself and the songs today, they all rhyme. Spellcasting. There, there's one, I want to show you one contrast. Again, Psalm 69. Psalm 69. We already saw this in um, Le, uh, Lamentation, but just to drive it home and then we'll be done. Psalm 69, 7 on to 13. Because for thy sake I have borne reproach, shame hath covered my face. I am become a stranger unto my brethren, and an alien unto my mother's children. For the zeal of thine house has, hath eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproach thee are fallen upon me. When I wept and chastened my soul with fasting, that was to my reproach. I made sackcloth also my garment, and I became a proverb to them. They that sit in the gate speak against me. And I was the song of the drunkards. The drunkards' songs against the saints. What do you think CCM is? Contemporary Christian music. <laughs> You're better off listening to at least professed secular music. But then again, see, it's the suspension of disbelief. You're fooling yourself. Verse 13, But as for me, my prayers unto thee, O Lord, in an acceptable time, O God, in the multitude of thy mercy, hear me in the truth of thy salvation. See, this is the suspension of disbelief that you guys have with your CCM. It's, it's you know, hey, hey, it's, 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 Fleshly music, but hey, we say Jesus, therefore it's all good. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. No, it most certainly is not. Oh, nay, nay. Oh, nay, nay. Oh, nay, nay. That is going to be it for this video. Uh, so what have we learned? There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end there, uh, but the end thereof are the ways of death. God, we have seen. God has ordained a specific type, you know, way that he likes. You know, he is God. And Satan has come around and counterfeited it and given you CCM. Heavy metal, rap, pop, Christian. You know, Christian, you are better off. You are better off. See, you're deceiving yourself. It's the suspension of disbelief. Okay? It's a sham. You're better off just listening to your ridiculous meatloaf. 
Because at least they're up front. At least they're up front with who they are actually worshiping. So is CCM. But see, you are willfully deceived about it. All things are lawful for you. That is going to be it for this video. It is now 1.39 p.m. So by 6 o'clock tonight, this video will be ready to be viewed. So This is what the Lord gave, brother. I sent you the notes, uh, and you didn't respond with any corrections or any additions. So, and the one brother who did, he's like, the things I would have said, you already said. It's like, okay, so, you know, but um, thank you for watching if you do. I love you. Please keep your servant in prayer. Things are weird. We will see you in the next video.